and welcome to the She Clicks webinar about beauty photography. I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm the founder of She Clicks. First, we have a word from our sponsor. This webinar is sponsored by MPB, the largest platform for used photography and videography kit. MPB has transformed the way people buy, sell and trade equipment, making photography more accessible, affordable and sustainable. MPB is proud to partner with She Clicks to help support women photographers and their work. So thank you very much to MPB. And now let's get started. I'm delighted to introduce our speaker, Yolanda Kingdon, who is a self-taught photographer and a Sony Europe image creator. Hi, Yolanda. How are you? Hello. How's it going this evening? It's good. Thank you. It's great to see you. Yeah, you too. You too. Yeah, really excited to be here. So my name is Yolanda. I'm a beauty photographer based in South Wales in Cardiff. Um, I've been working in the industry for over 17 years and I love capturing um, beauty images just like this. Is one of my really good friends, um, Soraya, and she's absolutely beautiful. And we've created some images with each other now over the last six, seven years. So here we go, Yolanda Kingdom. I've been working in the industry for 17 years. I'm a mother of four children, which can be a little bit trying it sometimes, but you know, it's, it's really, really good. And I do it, you know, obviously for the love. Um, I'm self-taught. Um, so I have completely learned by trial and error over the last 17 years, especially in the beginning. Oh, I remember using um, lights that my dad had picked up um, from a car boot cell and they were actually heated lamps. Um, so yeah, it was completely trial and error. Um, I specialize in beauty and portrait photography. Um, and here is my detail. So I'd love you to go and follow my Instagram if you can. So it's at Yolanda Kingdom. So top tips that I've got for beauty photography and portrait photography. So always make sure that your camera is focusing on the eyes. Um, especially the catch lights, make sure that they're really popping through. Um, so when I um, when I get the, the the lights position, usually I like to bounce the the lights from a really really large either a big white wall or from V flats. Um, that's really useful. And also the position of the eyes. I find that sometimes when I, I see some beauty photography and I think, oh my God, that wow, that's an amazing image. But then the, the eyes are slightly off center. So you always want to make sure that wherever the position of the chin and the nose is, that the, the model is, is always kind of, you know, you're seeing their, their, their eye color. Um, otherwise you end up getting quite like a spooky white eye. Um, so that's something I really make sure that I'm, I'm focusing on. Um, camera angles as well. So what I generally do um, to give, um, say some sometimes more of like an, an important look or something, I will point my camera um, upwards. So I will have the, the model or the client um, a little bit higher with their chin, um, higher up, and then I will be actually lower on the floor um, to give that sort of um, look of, you know, sort of importance and elegance. And it just elongates the neck and also the way that the light then falls on the face, um, it just looks absolutely beautiful. So makeup, I completely got it wrong right in the beginning. I was using um, a lot of makeup and that's something to add. I am actually um, a makeup artist as well. Um, it went hand in hand in the beginning, um, but I used to always put on a lot of foundation. And then I would always think, oh, why, why is this, you know, photograph coming out, you know, like kind of like plasticky. So then I sort of started taking it back, stripping it right the way back to almost just using moisturizer or um, just like a little bit of corrective concealer. And then I then started to really, really, really see the detail in the pop of all of the, um, the, the details of the skin, the pores, uh, maybe like a little scar or freckle or something. And that's something that's really distinguishable then because otherwise, if you're smothering the face in foundation, you're not really going to get through that real sort of look. And especially doing beauty, a lot of um, beauty campaigns, so like skincare products and stuff like that that I've shot for, um, they want to see the, the natural skin texture. Um, another really, really, really important um, point, which I'm really funny and fussy on, is finger position and hands. Um, so when um, when I'm posing, when I'm helping to pose my my model or my client, um, I'll make sure that their hands aren't you know sort of like clenching like this or you know doing anything funny. That I'll make sure that it's sort of like elegantly placed. 
so that it just it frames the face like a lot more. So for example, so when I'm um, helping pose a model, I'll be in front of them and I'll just say, look, just try and mirror what I'm doing. So it's always the position of the shoulders and bringing the hand up and then just doing like a little clasp or something. And, you know, just making sure that you're not kind of getting that kind of squidged up or anything. So it's very, very delicately sort of making sure that they're moving. And also when they're moving, you're gonna get a really nice like catch light on the shoulder that will then pick up on like the cheekbone or the nose tip or um, the chin. So yeah, making sure that even when you're doing the makeup, going back to the makeup there, that you know you're not just sort of um when you when you're working with a makeup artist or unless you experiment doing it yourself that you're not just stopping here that you bring it down to the decollage the collarbone the top of the arms yeah just make sure that you sort of get that consistency that goes through and that's my, my final point there is the consistency which can be with color and um, so if you're bringing in again the hands and the fingers that make sure that you've got the the models or the client's fingernails painted in a neutral tone or if you're going for a pop of color maybe bring it all in together the elements together so if you've got a background that maybe might be like a dusty blue or a purple or something like that that you just bring in the whole image together collectively so choose a concept so when I start doing my or before I start doing the photo shoot I'm thinking right what you know if I'm doing say something for my portfolio and portfolio work is so imperative and I think that a lot of um, photographers especially when they get to professional standard they think oh I don't need to create anymore and it's so important to keep on updating your um, your portfolio so you know what would you like to photograph so it might be an element of you know I really want to incorporate um nature with this so maybe bringing in a leaf or working with some um like light spheres or bringing in some crystals or something so you really start making and creating a mood board and also one thing that's absolutely excellent and um, that I've used forever and ever amen is Pinterest which is really really good to um, show your model and um, show your stylist your makeup artist your team and also you can print those images out um, so during the the photo shoot you can go back to um, your Pinterest your mood board and go ah right okay this is what we want to do or I love that pose something that not on a copy but you know sort of replicate or something um, and then also you've got then the lighting do you want it to be soft do you want it to be hard and obviously the difference then between soft and hard light is that you're going to get more of like a, a softer light is you're going to get a, a lot more sort of um, diffuse light so no shadows and the chin or minimal sh shadows under the chin and then the hard light you're going to really kind of pick up um, more texture you're going to replicate in sunlight so you're going to pick up more texture more contours of the face the cheekbones the jawline um, and then again you know studio or location you know do I want to do beauty outside do I want to do beauty indoors um, so yeah that's choosing a concept so this is an example of one of my mood boards that I've put together for some previous photo shoots so here it's just a um a big sort of collection of um ideas that I sent over to an agency when I did um when I wanted to bring something quite similar like it's very very soft or natural light and um, to show to the agency like this is something that we're actually going to be doing on the photo shoot with the models and then from me actually showing um, an example or several examples that they were like, okay, right, I really love what you're doing. And then, um, you know, popping in a bit of color as well, which is in a few of my recent um, images and also the position as well. Like I really loved how interesting some of these angles were. It's not like your general sort of like head on, it was just sort of like a slice. And so in this, I was able to use um, like a 70 to 300 millimeter lens and or a 100 or a 90 millimeter lens and really, really kind of push in and get that detail and with these sort of images especially the ones and um, that are maybe lower down here with the uh, bluey purple eye in, in the center is that you know you, you're just kind of focusing on the eye makeup there so it's really interesting not just to have like a straight on to really kind of experiment and get in there so here's an example of one of my one of my shots that I did um with one of my models and she had absolutely exquisite eyes and like absolutely loved it 
the the retouching wasn't um again it's all through trial and error so I love that the retoucher herself she's an amazing woman I know her quite well um but it was a little bit heavier on the retouch um for compression of um say like Instagram and things like that but when I've actually printed the images off you can you see a lot more um of the detail come through um but yeah I, I like looking back now, trial and error, I would have probably kind of lessened down or maybe um, sort of directed the retouch and not to do too much retouch on the skin. But overall, I, I was happy with the images. So how do you work with a model? So how do you approach a model agency? Um, it's, it's, it can be a little bit tricky. I remember like in the beginning, just thinking like, oh, how am I going to approach a model agency? But again, it comes back to, first of all, getting together your mood boards. And, and even if you've got like a, a friend or somebody that you can just show an example of what you can achieve um, and then show in the, um, the mood board, um, it, you really need to kind of explain it to an agency like this is what I'm going to achieve for your models and then having the, the confidence as well. Um, model mayhem, I'm not too sure. Angela, is model mayhem still going? Um, well, I haven't heard it isn't, if you put it that way. I haven't, I haven't looked <laughs> I was like, that was something that I, I used to absolutely love years ago. I don't know if it's still going or not, but maybe check it out, give it a little Google. Um, but it was a, an amazing platform years ago where you could find um, a, a whole team on there and you would type in makeup artist, stylist, hairstylist, model, and it can be within your area. And then you could reach out to them. I'm not too sure if it's all going, check it out. It is. I've, I've just had a quick Google, Google. It's showing. <laughs> okay, so amazing. But yeah, it's, it's a really, really, really good way of then, you know, you, you're not going through an agency. So you're just going on to the, this website where you can sign up um, and then obviously show an example of your portfolio um, and then, you know, reach out to people. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's a really, really, really good platform. And then prepare contracts um, so that you're keeping yourself safe as well so that you know the copyright is obviously with you that you're not just going to be giving these images away to anybody so it should always remain with the photographer um and obviously if there's any like model fees as well um that you know that you want to sort of like incorporate especially when you're going on then later on as um you know more professional then you need to sort of like staple down that you know this will be my sat rates and sign a contract and the deposit needs to be paid a certain time um and then in the contract you've got all of the details of your um you know your, your model as well where you can reach out to her again and, and keep everything filed up um, and also good then to, to keep everybody that's on the shoot as well, that you keep all of their contacts and their links. Because especially sometimes I might forget and I'll be like, oh, who was that stylist again? So at least when you've got your contract, everything's done. And make sure that your model feels really, really comfortable as well. Um, whenever I um, shoot a model, I will straight away make sure that like I'll sit down and have a cup of tea. Do you want any snacks? Um, make sure that she's hydrated, make sure she's warm. I've act, I've been known to go out and buy hot water bottles and you know make sure that they're nice and comfortable because it does really translate over in, in the images in the end result when, um, when a model's feeling a bit uncomfortable, whether she's cold or, or hungry or something like that. Um, and make sure that you prepare the models to wear something comfortable. So bring a dressing gown, bring socks, make sure you're, you know, you're well adapted for the day. Um, a big massive thing as well is 100% clean nails and hair. Sometimes oh, like over the past, I have had models that have maybe turned up with, you know, like chewed nails or, you know, like their hair's not being washed. So make sure before they come, just to help prepare them that, you know, I am gonna be bringing in the element of your, your hands. So, you know, if you can just please make sure that your, your nails and your cuticles are, you know, nicely attended to. Um, but also like I've always backed up, um, you know, like cheap one pound packet of, of nails from like uh, peacocks um, where, you know, if they haven't actually had their nails done that I can just pop them on for them. So here's an example of one of my contracts. Um, so it's just sort of, you know, putting down, you know, the time of the, of the, of the photo shoots, where the, um, the photo shoot's going to take place, um, you know, the clients, compensation. So it's all really, really, really like, um, 
easily sort of formatted out and then the concept and then special instructions put down at the bottom of it again just repeating to make sure they've got like a, something really really comfortable to put on so their dressing gown um nude underwear is so important um you know especially if you're going to be incorporating clothing or maybe it's a sheer clothing or something you want to make sure that they've got um you know their, their basics with them and make sure that you bring water um, a selection of shoes and stuff the amount of times that I've had models over the years and they've got like oh I haven't got any shoes I'm like I'll go and get some but you know we, we obviously can't all you know kind of picture them with with things like that but just to make sure that you've kind of given them like a heads up there so posing again so making sure your um your, your client or your model is very very comfortable and relaxed make sure um, before um, the photo shoot that the you know the hair and the makeup is complete with touch-ups so you'll be you know having your um your hairstylist or your stylist whatever and in between all of the kerfuffle you know like a little smudge might happen or something so just before you go into your shoot when the when the model is sat down and ready to have the, the picture taken that you can just make sure you're coming in with the touch-ups there and again going back to finger and hand placement making sure that pretty fingers are there and also the position of hands and um, sometimes when I've um, photographed um, clients models over, over the past that they will sort of like bring their hands out a little bit too sort of close to the camera and you know you're going to get larger hands so making sure that their hands are nicely kind of closed in it just gives more of like a feminine um, sort of like look and again position of shoulders and arms um, watch details. So this is one massive thing that's always grinding my gear. I remember doing um, a little photo shoot when I was 17 and I went up to London and um, myself, I did a photo shoot myself and it was for my family, mainly for my nan, so she could have a, a picture on the wall. And we paid a substantial amount of money. And the, the team had forgotten to tell me to take um, a little hairband off my wrist. And all of those gorgeous photographs for my nan just had this like hair bobble on. So just things like that. And then, you know, twisted straps. So if they are wearing a dress or something that just go back and just tweak and just be really, really like vigilant that everything is just really perfectly posed and then creases. So if you can get hold of um, like a D steamer, um, sorry, a steamer. So you can get one from like Argos or Amazon or something like that. I think relatively cheap, like 20 or 40 pounds or something. So just to make sure that, um, you know, before the shoot that you can just like hang that item of clothing up on a on a rail or something and just go over with the street uh, with the with the with the steamer um because it just makes it so much easier and then less post-production work less editing less kerfuffle and then earring position as well um when I've done um jewelry shoots in the past and also when I did pageant shoots in the past you always make sure that the earring isn't twisted so when they move their shoulder sometimes the earring can kind of flip so you've got to make sure that once they've put their, their, their shoulder in position, just to de-twist that earring. Otherwise, again, you're going to have to go back in with post-production and editing and just, say, just making sure you get everything in camera. Um, so when you start shooting, so experiment with angles of the camera. So getting high, getting low, changing up your, your, your lenses, you know, feel that freeze. And especially when you're doing like a creative shoot and you're experimenting really sort of like see what you would want to sort of get like don't be scared and think like oh I've just got to sort of you know sit here and wait for the model to do something like get in and you know have a laugh let get the, get the model the female or the male to to have a laugh and an expression and you know tell a joke things like that it, it just it makes the image just not so sort of boring when you're experimenting with these angles and again making sure that the the lighting when you've positioned your light so for example here if i've got a light that's coming from this angle from rotor light um you you've got the the the, the, the highlight is popping here and here so when the model poses you're not sort of losing so if you've got a light that's quite flat on you're going to get a shine here but if you move on the sides and if you move the shoulder you're really going to get those three points so even in like the little corner of the eye if you put like a little bit of highlighter or something or even like a little bit of like baby oil or something it'll just really really pick up and pop and come out of the, the picture 
It's another example of one of my images. So this is um, one of the examples of the photo shoots that I had sent to um, an agency. And then this was something that we had then created with one of their models. So where I said, I'm going to be doing um, uh, something that's quite expressive, quite fun, um, but I'm going to be bringing in this like pop of color. So these were some of the images that we created and we really, um, experimented with different sort of poses and it was so much fun and I was just like just be silly you know like bite your lip and pop in and you know just just have like a, have an absolute laugh and with this image as well because you've got the pop of the color and everything's consistent so what I, what I spoke about earlier that you've got the nail color is very similar the eyeshadow is very similar the backdrop's very similar so it kind of brings it all in um into a beautiful image and it just really kind of like you know, complements the whole image. Um, but I wanted to make sure as well, we did actually do um, a hair look and her hair was gorgeous and it was big and it was um, like a 90s sort of uh, blowout. But then I thought, all I'm focusing on now is the hair. So I said, right, okay, should we just grab some hairspray and some gel and just like slick it down? And as soon as we did that, the eyeshadows and expressions pop through. So sometimes it's good not to sort of like overcomplicate a beauty image and especially for beauty images you want just to focus on the face and then this is an example that I did um when I went to Finland um more of a black and white look but again we kept the um the styling very very simple it was inspired by Peter Limbra um, which was a, an absolute excellent photographer in my mind, absolutely outstanding. He shot all of the um, the 80s, the 90s um, models, supermodels, and he shot a lot of celebrities like Kate Winslet. And he would always look for hand placement. So that's something that I've definitely like resonated with um, over the years. And I just, just loved how this was just naturally lit um, in a studio. It was effortless. She had a really simple black dress on. Um, looking back, I probably wouldn't have allowed her to keep that many, not allowed her, but I, from my choice, I probably wouldn't have liked that many rings. But, um, I, you know, it was a really, really quick shoot and we shot it within about 20, 15, 20 minutes. And yeah, I kept the, the editing really, really simple. I edited these images. Um, so I didn't want to take away too much of her natural beauty and what we were doing here. So you can really sort of see the texture with the skin. Um, and again, we just played with the, the poses and I just let her naturally unfold. And she was an excellent model and she was just, you know, freely going. I had some music playing and, you know, it was it was a really, really excellent shoot. And this was was shot and um, the light was a big, massive um, window um, floor to ceiling. And I just brought in some, some black V-flats behind her. Um, yeah, and it was just wonderful. It was a really, really excellent shoot. So studio. So in my studio, I've got a selection of backdrops, but my favorite backdrops are hand-painted muslin backdrops. Um, I mean, you, you can experiment and you can make your, your own backdrops um, just buying a, a roll of muslin, maybe 1.35 or 2 point, um, maybe 2 by 4 metres, and that should be enough for like one, one model, um, one to two models if you want to get beauty, but um, yeah, I do like to have a bit of, bit of space there, um, but yeah, the, the, the hand-painted muslin backdrops are just absolutely exquisite, and they do really kind of give that, um, spe you know, especially with the Peter Limbra style beauty, fashion editorial shots, it does give um, a really, really gorgeous sort of finish, um, really distinguishable. Something that I can't live without now, and I'm actually using it for my laptop, is a posing table. Um, so over the years, um, to begin with, I would use like a stool and I would get the model for, for beauty shots. I would get the model to place her elbows just to rest. But now I've actually purchased um, about five or six years ago. Um, it's a, I don't know if you can get them anymore, Angela, but when I bought it, I bought it secondhand from a photographer in Cardiff. And it was just a special moment. I just was able just to grab him and I went on to Facebook and he was just selling a, a secondhand posing table. But it's 
um, like a black matte um, kind of like fabric, which then absorbs light. Um, but then you can also put like a reflective on there as well. So you can put on, um, you know, like any of your reflector or like a white bounce to really kind of fill in and it adjusts, it goes up and down as well. So it's really, really good for if a model wants to stand or if a model wants to sit and then they can like lean over it and just give like completely different angles to just, you know, if they're there and they kind of like back, especially with the posing table, I find now after I've had this for a couple of years that models are more sort of inclined to kind of reach forward, which kind of gives more of like a 3D look at this. It's an excellent, excellent tool. And then I've got a stool with it as well to so make sure that the stool is adjustable that goes up and down. Um, you don't want one that's kind of like static and also a nice cushion stool. Um, I did used to use a wooden stool and I actually tried it myself and, and sat there for like a while and I was thinking, oh, my bum really hurts. But, you know, with, with a nice cushion stool, um, you know, it keeps that the client going back to making sure that they're really comfortable. Um, a fan is, a, is an excellent piece that I cannot live without. Um, in, in my studio it's great for the movement of the hair and um, so if I've got a beauty shoot and if I've slicked back the hair but I might have kind of pulled out one or two strands or if the hair is really big and I'm doing a, a hair shoot for a hair salon you can really kind of like see that movement so yeah it's an excellent um, piece I bought mine from B&Q um, it's a big massive industrial fan but I know that if you go on to um, you know photography equipment um, websites that you can get ones with with a smaller angle so you can really kind of just angle just say you wanted that bit to sort of like stay flat but then you wanted this side to go so something maybe I might invest in in, the, in a little while, but for now, my, my, my big fan's doing the job. And also it's really, really good for like fabric. So when I've done my maternity sessions and stuff um, for pregnant pregnant ladies, and they've got some fabric going, um, or when I've done my editorial shots, and again, I've got this address on or a piece of fabric, you know, it's really good to sort of like blow around. You just catch that movement in the essence of the photograph. Um, and then make sure you've got some really, really powerful studio lights as well. So when I'm shooting um, beauty, I 100% need that power because I shoot at quite a high F stop. So maybe like an 18, 22 um, to really capture all of that detail. So I need a very, very good um, strobe that can really kind of get all of that, that detail over. And then with my choice of modifiers is either a large umbrella um, which I um, which I love my my pro photo umbrella, which is a a white inside. So you get more of like a, an even softer light. If you if I was to have a silver reflect, you get more of like a punch. So again, a pop to the image. So you get more of like the shine and the highlights that would come out. And the nice thing about a really large umbrella is that you can also put a um, what is it again? Calls again, Angela. My mind's gone blank. A diffusion, diffusion. <laughs> my mind went blank just then. Yeah, so you can have like a diffusion on a large umbrella. Um, an optical snoot is also excellent um, for making your images a little bit more dramatic. So I did a look for um, last Valentine's where I had a love heart on the on the model's face and it was just really unusual um, and you can also use um uh, colored gels inside the optical snoot and you can incorporate that with a large umbrella to sort of give like more of a, a softer light so you can mix up your your modifiers but i most of the time have used um v flats or a simple white wall and I've used um, one, generally one light um, to my left and my right and just bounced off the wall behind me. And then the, the light is then just spread all around me and then it hits the, the model's face and it's just so soft. And the way that um, you can really sort of distinguish these sort of um, bounced lights is the catch lights in the model's eyes. So if you zoom up quite a lot into the model's eyes, you can actually see where this light is coming from so with this particular light setup that I that I do you can always sort of see two little strobes either side of me and me in the middle <laughs> so it's quite fun and then um, a scrim is, is is a gorgeous light source as well where you can shoot through and um, especially if you want to get more of like um, a softer light from like one angle or something or from the front so you can move the, the scrim around I actually use a, a double diffusion um, piece of fabric that I bought from Amazon and it's I'm looking at it now it's about two meters by three four meters and I've just rigged it up on a on a stand 
And then sometimes I've used it in front of the model to get a really nice sort of um, even light all around the face or being a bit creative, use it behind the model so you get a true white um, background that comes through. So it's, 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 it's very cheap, but it's actually very good. So here's another example of um, some of my work where I've incorporated a bit of nature. Um, I do love using a lot of like natural elements, especially when doing beauty, because, you know, if you are doing beauty, you want to make sure that, you know, you kind of kind of bring on that natural aspect. So here it obviously is a natural, um, a natural leaf, um, but I, I spray painted it white um, and it just sort of, you know, popped out, um, popped out of it, the brown backdrop. And it was just a bit unusual and I experimented. And again, it just comes down to experimentation. Um, and this um, set of images has actually just been featured in a magazine. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's, it's just um, been published now in a magazine in France, which I was super, 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 super proud of. Um, but yeah, again, just experimenting with the angles and, you know, just making sure that, again, your model's really comfortable and, um, you know, just, just let them flow and, you know, again, go back to your Pinterest board. You know, I saw that, but we can use it with a leaf instead of what we've seen. So again, it just comes down to experimentation. The only critique I've got on this um, shot at the moment I'm looking at is that the center image I probably would have brought up here a little bit higher. Um, but other than that, I was really, really happy with these with these images. And again, keeping uh, making sure that the makeup wasn't um, wasn't heavy. And um, there was a little bit of like bronzer and things like that going on, but all of the, the freckles there are, are natural. And I just didn't want to sort of cover her natural um, beauty that, that was there. So I really just worked with her natural beauty. So lighting, going back to making sure that you, you're using powerful lighting. Um, so for example, like you've got Pro Photo, you've got Roto Light. Um, I've got a selection of different lights that I use. Um, I, I've used um, Interfit S1s. I've actually just got now um, two um, B10 X plus uh, Pro Photo lights, and they are absolutely amazing and very, very powerful. The 500 watt lights. Um, so, you know, even to take them on location, I've actually taken them on location recently um, to do a magazine submission for Harper's Bazaar, and um, they were just absolutely excellent. They just, wow, all I can say is just, wow, they just popped out and they completely overpowered the sun and the shots that came through. And then, you know, Rotolite are absolutely exquisite lights. And what I love about Rotolite is that you can see what you're shooting, especially for a beginner photographer that what you um, sometimes don't see with, um, unless they have like a, mod a modeling lamp on them um, with the, say for example, like a Profoto or an Interfit, if you actually turn that off, you couldn't see going back to say an, an older generation, you wouldn't have been able to see how the light is actually sort of falling off. But with the Roto light, you can see what you're shooting. So at the moment, I've got two rotor lights that are actually lighting this video right now. And, um, you know, you can just really just see where the lights go into. You could see um, before, you know, if, if you'd like put on a, on a strobe and like, oh, how is the light going to fall off? But with this, you can adjust it and you can bring it around. You can bring it to the side and, you know, you're seeing what you, you're shooting what you're seeing effectively. Um, be mi mindful about how the light shapes to so exactly what I was um, just saying just then. So making sure that, exactly, for, for example, with the rotor lights, that if you actually hold your, your lights, or even, for example, if you've got a phone light in front of you now, your phone torch, and or maybe later on this evening, and just go in front of the mirror and just see how the light naturally falls around you. So if you take a little bit higher, a little bit to the side, and just see how the light naturally falls, You'd even get a piece of paper, a piece of cloth and use a diffusion and see how that looks. So just like learning how the light patterns, but definitely don't bring a light up this way. You're going to get a bit of a ghost story <laughs> sort of appeal. Um, and then choose a modifier or bounce the lights. We were saying about the uh, the V flats or using a wall. Um, and then the soft light or the hard lights are going back to, you're going to see more detail and more pop. You're going to see more um more of like the uh the contours and the shadows and the highlights with the with the harder light and the soft light then you get more of like a replicating natural daylight 
So here's an example of one of my shots I did with one of my really, really good friends, um, Rachel. And as you can see here, it was my two lights that I was bouncing off here. And I'm just in front of my, my cat, well, I'm sorry, behind my camera there. And the position that I had my, um, I'm actually, I've put in here two V flats because for this particular program, it wouldn't actually let me, I don't think bounce off a wall. So I use V flats to replicate it, but it was a wall that I'd used. Um, and with the position of the lights as well, I always make sure when I'm standing up that they're quite high up. So when um, when my model or my, my client, male or female, is looking um, towards the light, that the light is really kind of falling, coming down and, you know, really kind of uh, kissing the skin and the lights and the highlights around here. And even though it's a soft light, you're still gonna, then going to get natural contours because the light's a little bit higher. And then here again, I, I've made sure that all of the, the elements were quite consistent. So I made sure that the, the back, backdrop and the, and the lipstick and the elements just really tied together. And I also shot this at F22. And the reason I shot an F22 is to make sure I really get that detail through. And it does look a little bit darker here, but then when you go on to the, the photograph, um, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, when it was retouched, they just lifted the highlights a little bit and you can see that catch light there that I was talking about. So you really get that lovely flood of light in the eye. So here's the example of the resulting images, which I was extremely proud of. And this is probably one of the most highly detailed um, shots um, that I've done. And I just absolutely love, um, love these shots. So we made sure that the, um, you know, again, that it was consistent with the with the color toning and we brought in a really, really simple earring. I really love that it was just like that gold, warm, brown, red, like everything just bringing in tones. And then we played with expressions. And what I love like here as well is that you can see her highlights. So the little like highlights you're just picking up and looking at this a critique in my own work here, that the only thing I probably would have done is put a little bit of shine here, like a little bit of oil or something on a Cupid's bow. And just here in the corner of her eyes, just to kind of bring all of the, the little kisses of highlights through. And yes, I have used a little bit of a, a hand here, but she was kind of doing like a like kind of grumpy face and it was quite cute. So I brought it in. And um, yeah, so that is the result and image there. So yeah, an example of another lighting setup for beauty where the, the light is just flooding and, and, and making sure that it's really, really nice and, and bright behind. And what you can do here with the two lights as well in the background. So here you've got two um, sort of like V flats and V flats, or you can use poly boards or something just to sort of like make sure that the, the light is just really filling the backgrounds here. And also you're getting this really, really lovely kiss of highlights just around the, the side of the face. But if you wanted the, the, the background to be more lit instead of like the, the kiss, you could just turn the lights around towards the wall. Um, so yeah, they, that's an example of that lighting setup. And I used a, I can't remember the name, I think it was um, a Godox or an Interface. It was one of them, but I used a, a very, very small, um, like a beauty dish, but it was like a pop-up, like almost like an umbrella beauty dish. Um, but yeah, this was a really, really beautiful um, image that brought through, again, very unusual um, catch lights, um, especially around the side of the face here. And again, what I probably would have done in this example as well is just lifted um, that white um, uh, fill here just to kind of like for a little bit more of the highlights. But it was a really, really pretty shoot. And the resulting image, and again, keeping everything consistent, making sure that you've got the nice white light airy. So this was the resulting image. Um, so you can see you've got the lovely highlights, um, even the highlights in the hair. Um, yeah, we really kind of like went to town. I think I used on this, it was um, a mixture of baby oil and a like a thin foundation and just made sure that it was just like all over. So it was just really lovely and consistent. And I worked with a really, really amazing um, hairstylist um, at, at, the, at the time. I said I wanted something like very unusual and sort of artistic and creative. Um, and I do love, I think you can see now, I love working with freckles. So whether or not they're natural or not, I always make sure that I bring in just a little bit. Just, I think that when you're using freckles, 
um, it just kind of brings back the kind of realism of skin. So even if they had been um, used a little bit more, say concealer or foundation that I might necessarily wanted if I'd worked with another makeup artist, um, just to kind of pop on those uh, little freckles and details, it just kind of brings back that realism. But this was more of a creative shoot. So it wasn't um, like a beauty campaign or for skincare or anything. This was more of a creative shoot where I wanted to experiment um, with a team. Um, yeah, and the shots came out lovely, I think. <laughs> so my camera equipment, um, I've got a Sony A7 um, a 4 and I've got a Sony A1. Um, I love using both the cameras for both um photographs for stills and for video. So what I've used a lot on um, my Instagram, especially over like the last year where my style is becoming a lot more confident now, um, I have used the, the video side and a bit of like a slow-mo. So in the middle of me taking the shots, I'll say, oh, stop there. I, I love the pose you're doing. Can I, can I bring in the camera and just do a little bit of slow-mo? So it's really, really good to use the, the video aspect, especially for social media, for, for reels, for, for content. So people can also, you know, when they click on the image, they think, oh, that's a really pretty image. They'll then see, you know, that the model in the essence and the movement as well. And how also when I, when I shoot like this, when I do the video, you can all, all um, also see what the, the images look like um, before they've been retouched really, because it's, it's the same same satins and everything else. So it's really, really special to have as well. And you know, when you put it with a little bit of music and it just gives that atmosphere. Um, so the 100 millimeter macro lens is absolutely to die for. You get all of the detail that pops out, but that does mean you need to come closer and have that confidence to come closer and pull back and to move. So you're moving with the camera. Um, which is which is wonderful. And then also the uh, 24 to 70 is beautiful because you get very unusual angles. So when you're doing beauty, you can kind of like pop a little bit wider and it kind of distorts the features a little bit. Um, but it's, it's an excellent lens. And also you, you kind of like sit back a little bit and kind of like play a little bit forward. Um, 35, I use a lot for um, editorial shots, a lot for, for my wedding photography, um, and it's just an absolute beautiful lens, and I just love the, the softness of, of the, the photographs, and yeah, and the and also a lot of people um, don't use such a, a big zoom, but I actually fell on to the 70 to 200 and 70 to 300 by accident by actually using that software that I just showed um, the lighting diagrams and I was playing along I think it's uh, I can't remember the name of the um, the company now uh, it's El Elixir Elixir I think it's called um, it's a really, really good software because you can actually see how your lights are going to be set up and you can place them around and also you can try out focal lengths of lenses and that's where I found the focal lenses I hadn't actually purchased until this point. And I thought, oh, what's this lens? And I started clicking on it and I was like, wow, this is like absolutely insane. So like I'm able to get really low down and get a completely different perspective and I can get as, you know, really nice closed in close shots. And I'm not like being intrusive enough in, in the models or the client's face. So they've, they're the lenses that um, people wouldn't necessarily use for beauty, but they're absolutely excellent. So here's an example of me when I did my um, my presentation um, in wax, uh, sorry, in the photography show. Um, and yeah, it was my first time ever doing um, a, a live presentation. I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, it was um, a long time sort of like come in and sort of like now after 17 years um, getting, you know, sort of like not like recognized, but you know, sort of realizing, okay, I'm doing something right. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just lovely to see people like appreciating everybody's work and, you know, just to talk to like-minded people. So yeah, if you haven't been to the photography show before, it's 100% recommended. Um, yeah, my little cheery face in the, in the, in the middle there, but yeah, it was, it was a really exciting moment in my life. And, you know, that day, um, stood up in, in front of quite a few people and just spoke about, you know, how my, my journey and, um, and, and beauty photography and yeah, it was, it was a fantastic day and a fantastic experience. So yeah, I'd love for you to come along in the future. So retouching. 
Um, learn online, um, use YouTube and um, things like that, things that I didn't have years ago. And also, um, I don't um, retouch a lot of my very highly detailed beauty work because, you know, I, I'm, I, I find myself I'm more a photographer and in itself, a retoucher is their own artist. And I think that when you, you know, sort of like you reach out to people like that, that, you know, you, you know that you're going to get consistency and, and also it comes down to time. So when I've got a very, very heavy workload, it's good to sort of like um, reach out and, you know, sort of say, could you retouch the sort of selection of images? And then we'll go back and forth on ideas like this is a color tone that I really like. This is a, a bit of inspiration that I like. So they're, they're not sort of being too creative, but you can show them what you would like to achieve with your own images. And they don't charge a hellish a lot. So you can go on to Instagram and it's called Find Retoucher um, and a few other Instagram sites. And um, if you just pop in Instagram Retoucher, you know, the retouchers can charge between like five, 65 pound per image. Um, obviously, the higher up the budget, the more detail you're going to get through and a lot more time they're going to spend, um, a lot more professional, higher standard. But um, yeah, it's, it's an excellent way where, you know, if, I'm, if I've got a lot of work on and I'm like, oh, God, you know, I don't want to, you know, sort of waste my time and do something that I know like a professional retoucher can do so much better than, than myself. Um, and also going back to, you know, don't over edit the image, don't take too much of the detail out of the skin. Um, if they have a distinguishable scar or beauty spot or mole or something, leave that in. That's what's making the image um, and keeping the skin texture and also stay true, uh, true to the skin tone as well. So, you know, going back on, you know, when I was, um, you know, teaching myself quite a few years ago, I would, you know, play with all the adjustment bars and I would warm it up too much or, you know, whatnot. So now I've kind of like learned. So when I do do a little bit of retouching myself, I'm like, right, OK, all I need to do here is a little bit of like retouching and not to go too crazy. And then also like letting your eyes adjust a little bit. So I think that a lot of the time you can kind of like sit there for like hours on, on your on your iMac or your, your laptop or your PC and your eyes get a little bit kind of like stuck in I've been here for too long. So go away, grab a glass of water, cup of tea, come back and review those images again. So again, the um, composition. Um, so make sure that you're playing and experimenting with different angles, different perspectives. Don't be scared to, you know, move to the side, get low, get high, play with different um, elements. So when you're experimenting, you're not just sort of like stuck in one position um, because I just find like it can just get like a little bit boring and repetitive. Um, and even if you end up not using necessarily all the ones that you were a bit experimental, but there might be that one shot that you just think, oh, Oh my God, that I wouldn't have achieved that if I had just stayed in that one position. Um, and what is the hero of the shot? So if you're doing something like a pop of eye color or if um, the hair is absolutely gorgeous and has been created um, similar to one with the buns or or the um, like a big blowout, or if you've got um, you know, like, a, like a, an earring or something, make sure that you're not overcomplicating um, the image because you wouldn't want it all kind of going on because um, it looks a little bit confusing then. Um, experiment with, you know, full face, half a face, parts of the face, especially if you're doing, say, something like a jewellery shot or something, you wouldn't necessarily need to get um, the whole of the, uh, the, the shot in. You could just get in, like, say, the element of just the ear and just the earring. Um, you could just get in, just say, just the lips or just the eye. Um, so what you can do then is just, you know, make sure that you're focusing. If it's just for, say, like nails or something like that, you don't have to have a whole face and you can actually change the, the elements and the angles here. Um, shooting a subject from ab above, so if you're above and the, the model or the subject is lower, you are showing like more of a vulnerable sort of like aspect. And then if you're like down, you're going to get more of that sort of, um, you know, like uh, confident appearance. Um, utilize a negative space. This is really important. I, something that I learned quite quickly and quite earlier on, um, that when you're taking um, a, a portrait of somebody of three quarter length or something like that, you want to make sure, so just for example, if this is a magazine, this is like half a page, 
that you don't want to sort of like bring it too close up with and you can't actually put in the um like a title or, or any sort of um text so if you kind of pull back a little bit that would be enough then for a headline for a border so you, you're really making sure that you, you're working with your, your negative space and then they can put in say elements so where I've worked with a lot of um beauty brands and things like that but I need like jewelry and um, makeup products you can have the the model or or the client here and then they might sometimes say or oh, this lip color is this lipstick and they'll put like a little like picture of the lipstick so it's really important to use negative space and also like going back to keep creating so it is super 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 important to always keep creating it doesn't matter if you're a beginner if you're a professional if you're 20 30 50 years in your game like it's so important to keep creating so in between my my work I will always make sure that I'm adding to my portfolio and also then it kind of pushes out to um brands they'll say oh that was an amazing image and I love that example so what I always say to quite a few of my clients you can't advertise a Mars bar without a Mars bar so you know you need to make sure that you're advertising yourself like you are your brand so you know if you want to appeal to to skincare brands or to a beauty brand or to a makeup brand you need to make sure that you're showing that content and put it in your portfolio put it on Instagram this is what I want to do um so again so through amateurs to professionals you know like I'm 17 years into my career like I'm still learning and um, I think that you're still learning at any stage but you know it is still so important I would never stop creating and I am a creative person whether it's down to makeup or you know getting everything together from the styling and, and I just really love being involved in you know pulling together and when I see that vision um, you know pull it all together and collaborate with the team as well that's really important because you get different sort of ideas and the amount of times over the years where I've sort of sat down in a room and I'm like right okay guys we might be on a zoom call or we might be on a telephone call and or we might be sat down the night before um or the day before or meet up for a coffee and it's you know you get all of those ideas on a plate and right okay what we're going to do we're going to do one look two looks three looks and you know bring it all together and challenge yourself as well to create at least once a month um so even if you say right this month, next month, I'm going to create something with a reflection. The next month, I'm going to work with um, with a pop of colour. The next month, I'm going to, you know, take myself outdoors and do so. So always challenge yourself to kind of keep pushing yourself. And then once you've done those little tiny goals, you'll go, OK, that's cool. Like I've, I've pushed myself and it feels good. Um, and never get stuck on I'm good enough. Like I've never, ever had that mindset where I can just kick back and go, nah, I'm done now. I'm good. Like I've, I've kind of reached the, the, the high tops because I'm always learning. And, you know, most nights I'll sit there and go on to YouTube or I'll look at somebody's work, but not on to the point of like, I want to copy it, but I get inspired. Like, you know, make sure that you keep getting inspired and, um, you know, and, and also um, it, everybody has like a similar mindset, I think, but where they'll look and they want to kind of take like little elements and think like, oh, I was inspired by maybe the way they positioned that that model there. I was inspired by the way that they had used maybe like a glass bowl and they got like a, 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 a an unusual reflection. So, you know, always keep experimenting and never feel like, oh, I'm amazing and, I, and I've done everything. And also don't doubt yourself too much either as well. I think that over like the last 17 years I've doubted myself quite a lot and I've thought like oh I'm not good enough and I haven't done as well as xyz but don't focus don't kind of focus on that don't have those like blinkers on like oh you know I I can't do anything because and, and you know looking at everybody else and looking how wonderful everybody else is doing like just focus and manifest on yourself that you know you are taking these little baby steps in in the, in the correct in, in the correct direction and you know and and always you know if you're going back to keep creating and just focus on what you want to achieve so if you want to achieve some beautiful um you know P peter limber inspired images if you want to do wedding photography you want just make sure that you're kind of sat in those little kind of goals because you are pushing yourself forward experiment with light lighting with textures um, so it can be anything from water to reflection to anything like that with your, with your angles, indoor, outdoor, and also reach out to magazines to publish. So when you feel a little bit more confident, there are platforms out there. Um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a, a platform, I think it's called Caviar. Yeah, it's Cav, Caviar, 
K-A-V-Y-A-R. So on there, you can um, go on there and you can upload your images. You can reach out to magazines. And um, what they do is that they um, sometimes sort of do like a little announcement, like we are looking for photographers for publications. It's a really good way of, um, you know, getting your name out there and being seen by other people, other creators in the industry. And also to have, you know, your, your, your work featured. It's, it's an achievement to have your work um, featured in a magazine. So here's a, an experimental um, uh, view of, of like where I've actually used reflections. This has come from natural sunlight um, and this was all naturally lit. Um, and I just wanted just to focus on the element here of making sure that the, the hair was really, really simple, making sure the makeup was simple, the nails, everything was really, really, really simple and neutral. But what the, the star of the show here is the reflection. And it was literally a piece, I think it was a piece of fabric that had like little like crystals or diamonds or sequins on. And I just kept on moving it and just seeing how the light sort of um, went around the face. And it was it was really, really interesting shot. But you can do this with like a, a mirror ball, um, uh, with a, I, what else could you do? With? Maybe like some tin foil, you can crumple up some tin foil and do that as well. Um, I've seen some, um, some work where they've used like a ripple effect. Um, so they've actually got like a, a tank of water, um, maybe like a, a fish aquarium, only a small one, obviously not too heavy and just put like a little bit of water in and you can just ripple the water. Obviously you'd have to have um, a team, a couple of people that would help you. Um, but if you shine the light through or get some daylight, you would then get the rippled effect on the face. So I might be something I might try and do. I just love like reflections of something a little bit more unusual. And that is my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Um, we have some questions. I was going to jump in with a couple because I'm sure there'll be some more questions coming in as well. But um, you mentioned music. Yes. But, you know, you, you, a couple of times said you were playing some music. Do you not use it on all shoots? And when you do use it, do you have a sort of like go to playlist? So I'm a lover of um, eclectic music from classical to Afro beats to everything. And I've actually got quite a few um, playlists that I put on my phone. So it might be like a rock and roll or something. And it depends on like the vibe. So if, if, if I'm kind of clicking with something, they're like, oh, I'm really into rock and roll music or I'm really into classical music or we'll vibe off each other. But I do think that it really, really helps somebody again. It's the element of relaxing. And then if you have some dancey music on or something, then you get that you know, they might dance or they might kind of do a certain position. So, yeah, I think that um, I probably use music 90% of the time on my shoots. Okay. Quite easy. Yeah. <laughs> and also you mentioned rotor lights. I couldn't remember which ones you said you've got. Is it, uh, do you have the Neos or is it the EOS? Or... EOS 2. EOS, okay. So yeah. the, um, the, oh, the, these are the, this is the rotor, uh, a Neo. Yeah, You've yeah, got I've, the got one. The, I've got the bigger one. I've got yeah. two okay. big ones. Yeah. Right. Do you use them as constant lights all the time? Because they, they, they can work as a flash as well, can't they? But do you use them yeah. as constant or flash? I use them constant. Um, I have got the ability, I have got a trigger for them um, that you can use flash. And again, they are powerful enough, um, you know, for outdoors as well. And they're so lightweight and the, the sets and the kit that I've got, I've got it in a big bag. And even I've been on weddings and I've shot weddings over the summer and okay, a little bit heavy, but not too cumbersome. But, you know, I can take it into shooting then the reception, the guests and, and stuff like that. So it's, it is really, really, really good. And also the battery life just lasts and lasts and lasts. And you've got all the different color temperatures. You've got the warm, you've got, you know, this, they are yeah. very, you know, very unusual, very unusual, but an excellent light. Excellent. And they've got the handles on the back as well. Yeah, they? they've got the handles so you can, can hold them instead of using a... A yeah. stand sometimes they've got a firm but also print. they've got all of the gel filters in there as well and i know on their um new ones they've just done the, the, the pro range um yeah. and there was jake hicks and a few other photographers have done their own presets um so jake hicks does like a lot of like gelled light um and yeah he he's put in like all these presets who's like you know it's very it's very clever so you maybe have like a natural light here and then you know you could have like maybe like a little bit of pink or purple like angela loves having purple in her background <laughs> <laughs> how did you know that's that's an aos up there actually but yeah. it's, it's the original one okay uh right so we have uh, a question that someone asked quite early on now you've touched on it as you've gone through but they said 
could you give some tips specifically for breaking into fashion photography when you're already in another genre of photography? So I guess you're already a competent photographer, but how do you kind of transition and break into fashion? Okay, so if, if, if this has person done any sort of like fashion stuff, they like experimented yet, or is it just something that they would uh, like to do? Maybe they can add that to their question or add it as a question at the bottom. I can't, I, it doesn't say. Okay, but if if if, if um if they haven't um done it before, again, just uh, you know, create, reach out to you know, model mayhem, reach out to a friend. Maybe you might find somebody that has an editorial or a fashion look on Instagram. Like, hey, would you like to shoot? You know, but if if they are agency represented, then you obviously then have to then go through the agency. But you know, if you show them maybe a different element of your work, but I would like to do this, and here's a mood board then the agency will then be more inclined because you're showing them a mood board. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's how I would go. And then also, um, you know, making sure that the styling, if you are going to be doing that yourself, um, you know, getting very, very simple pieces, like something like a very simple black outfit or a white outfit, don't overcomplicate it and let your model like relax into poses, show some examples from a Pinterest as well. Like here's, here's an example of a pose I'd love to achieve. And then once you've then done your first shoot, then you'd be flying colors okay great stuff <laughs> um oh this this one's more of a comment than a question it said you mentioned some software called elixir um and it allows you to create a virtual studio so she's saying it looks very useful so thank you for That's mentioning cool. that and then we have another question which is um do you always get a model release form signed by models and friends and clients or is it something explicit in your contract already um, so if I'm working with a model, if I'm working, say if it's obviously a pay job, I'll need to put that through as well. Um, but if it's a friend, if I'm experimenting with the friends and if I've shot them several times, then hand on heart, no, I haven't, but I should do. Um, I think, you know, you, you always should, you know, cover yourself as an amateur or professional and, and just have that written down, you know, print off as many as you want, hundreds of them and just have them there, just sign them out. And also, um, you know, they are good to help you with your timeline throughout the day. So what are we going to be doing? What are we going to be achieving? And also the time scale, when are you going to get the images back? And, you know, how, how is it going to, to unfold? And having the, the certain elements at the bottom, like what the model can bring or the client can bring, reminding them of, of things like clean nails, clean hair things. So it is it is important to have certainly that, you know, like the, those sort of um, contracts there. Okay. or like information sheets <laughs> yes okay and make sure they read them <laughs> yeah <laughs> um do you find you have a problem with hot spots on models foreheads particularly in skin that's slightly oily and is this resolved with makeup or post-processing if you do have that problem um, so that can be down to a few elements of is the model's face or the client's face oily um, you could always use a press, um, a press uh, paper. I think they used to sell them. They still sell them in the body shop now, and it's just um, like a, a de-oiler paper. They come in like little packs. You can just like pat yeah. that off, um, or you could use a, a press powder if you didn't want to use. Um, if you want, to, if you don't mind using a little bit of makeup, but also where um, the light is falling. So at the moment, now I've got a bit of shine here. One to do with so I'm put a bit of press powder, but the light is higher, so it is hitting my forehead. But if you're going to be taking um, flat images like front on like this, you are going to get that. But if you move the direction, the highlight then change to the cheekbone. So again, it's it's kind of a few different elements, you know, the lights and the angle and the makeup. Someone once suggested you're mentioning the the paper uh, using blotting paper. Yeah, that works well. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, someone saying thank you very much for your presentation. You shoot. You mentioned shooting at f twenty two, which is quite. The quite a small aperture yeah. but the sweet spot of most lenses is wider open and they're just asking about why you choose that option and um, to make sure the you know so there's quite a few elements to that so you've got all of the detail you caption all the detail in the skin for me that's what I've like done somebody might be doing a little bit different maybe shooting an f11 like I do shoot f11 quite a lot but you know I, I do like this one particular light setup that I use where I bounce and it's just something that I kind of keep going yeah. through and once then I got that result with Rachel with the red lip and the gold and and I saw all of that detail come through and also when her hands came in as well it wasn't like it was slightly out of focus like everything was just like yeah. bang like, like in focus you know I mean you are using 
reasonably long lenses and you're shooting at quite close distances. So you have got quite shallow depth of field unless you close down to a relatively small aperture. I guess that's yeah. the reason you're, you know, yeah. If, you, if it was a completely flat subject, you could open up a bit more and it'd be completely yeah. shot, but you haven't got a completely yeah. flat subject. Yeah. But I usually like mix between 100 and the the two the 70 to like 200, 300. And honestly, if nobody has tried the 70 to 300 before, and if they're able to get to a camera shop and just try it, it is it's such, such an underrated like lens. And it's amazing. When I used it, I was like, hmm, <laughs> decent. Next question is, are rotor lights as powerful as strobes? I think the answer is no, not quite. No, I mean that they, they they have a flash element in them, and they are more powerful when they are used as flash, mm -hmm. but they're not as powerful as a dedicated flash. No, they, they, it's, a, it's a it's a completely it's, they're in their own league. So I I can't compare and go apples and pears. Like they are, you know, they are exquisite lights. I use them a lot for like my video. So if I'm doing like a video movement, or if I'm doing more of like a soft light, or if I want to kind of like um. It's just say like I'm using like a day a window and I want to then kind of like fill in. Um, they are excellent lights, excellent, excellent mm -hmm. lights. But it, it's it it's really hard if you kind of put them both together. You can't really. It, it's 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 not really yeah. fair to be honest. You know. No. no. Fair enough. Um, oh, someone has asked if you could say the name of the lighting system that you use. And we've mentioned a few. So I mean, the last one we've been talking about is Rotolight, which is R O T O L A I L I G H T, and they've got. A couple of different types. There's AOS, A E I O S, and Neo, N E O. And they just brought out their pro version as well. Yeah. 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 And they're on to what is it, AOS 2 and Neo, th Neo 3, but there's pro versions which are a bit more powerful as well. Um, yeah. But you also mentioned Pro Photo, which is P R O F O T O. Yeah. I've never and really B liked that spelling, Pro Photo, but there you go. B10, B10 X Plus, and then interfere as one um which i used for a long long time um you know going back like right in the day i, I was using like my bowens my bowen at bowens gemini a spread i mean they lasted me like nine ten years and you know they, they changed my whole career you know it's yeah. very sad that they're not around anymore um yeah. but you know you know very you know all very different very 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 different lights and all very good in their own way you know yeah yeah definitely Okay. Oh, someone is asking if you have a preferred light distance and do you find them um, usually being closer or further to the model, I guess, than, than you, I mean, I think they mean there. Well, as in when I have my lights behind me yeah, or when but, I... But basically, how far away do you like to have the lights from the model? Um, I don't know if I've ever like measured it, to be honest, but I'm just trying to... No, it's probably like one and a half, two metres if I'm doing like a beauty. So the model couldn't quite reach that. If they were reaching no. out with their arm, they wouldn't be able to no, reach No, that. But then if I'm using it. obviously like natural light or if I'm using rotor lights or something like that, or if I'm using a diffusion or an umbrella or, you know, you, you can really just play around. And again, I think it just kind of comes down to if you're in that stage of wanting to experiment, whether it's amateur or professional, just play with the lights. You know, like I, I'm still doing it now. Like I will forever keep doing it. You know, see the modifier, put your different diffusions on, use grids as well. I'm certainly going to be using more grids um next year. Um, and just experiment, see, see how it how you know what what you want to achieve. And oh, I don't like that or I like that and just see what what rocks your boat really. Okay, great. Uh, another question about a model. How do you stop a model pouting too much when they clearly have fillers and it's not the look for your shoot would you tell them before or keep reminding them to not over pout without oh, this, being too rude <laughs> this probably sounds i don't know um i think that um a lot of people are choosing filler nowadays because that's the look they're going for desired look they're going for and they look gorgeous either way but if you want a certain look that hasn't got a fitted look then choose a different model that's what i would probably do um but if they you know have like maybe like a pout or something and big lips and if you get on really, really well with the model and if you want to make it work I would try and like help them to like stretch their mouths out a lot so um you know kind of doing like a like stretching their like mouth stretching their jaw relaxing their jaw and um, and also try and like not get them to like purse their lips like so whenever I do a beauty shoe or a portrait I'll just say like just relax your jaw a little bit and then just make sure you've got like a little like gap so imagine you're kind of slowly calmly like 
exhaling out your lips and you've got that little like gap and that can just kind of give like more of like a relaxed feel to the chin the jawline and then the lips and because they're not like you got more of like a yeah it's more of like a relaxed look yeah <laughs> I thought right. it was like the best way to explain it <laughs> Okay, that makes sense. Um, another question, if you were going to have a print, I don't know if this is something you ever do, is there a company that you would recommend? Um, I just printed off some images um, by a company that I just found online. It was just some images I wanted to put up on the wall. But um, if I wanted to do like a big proper professional print where I was going to like a show or something like that, then I would probably definitely reach out to like a a very high-end um, printing company but again it would just come down to when I got to that point I, I couldn't recommend one right at this moment okay doke great now I'm going to say this is the last question it usually means another one jumps in but <laughs> I'm happy for the questions <laughs> <laughs> do you have any plans for a beauty workshop or something similar in the near future yes I would love to do it and if anyone's interested let's get it <laughs> well it so sounds like they are yeah, if anybody is like interested in doing a beauty workshop and anything like that, like it's something that I've been wanting to do for such a long time. And I've like, even written down like notes, like this is the lights and setup I'd use. I do this, I do that. It's been brilliant uh, to hear from you. Thank you so much for sharing all your tips and advice and showing us your pictures. It's been really interesting. Thank you so much. It's like, honestly, it, it mean, means the world to me. And it's not just, you know, like photography is not just clicking a camera or whatever it's it's been you know it's like one of my loves and I've got a huge passion for it and it's like one of my babies it's my fifth child and you know I, I, know it's, I am I'm very very passionate about you know my, my photography so you know even if anybody wants to reach out on Instagram and you know give me a message and if they've got like any questions like I'm happy to do that as well so yeah brilliant well thank you very much enjoy the rest of your evening Thank you with my cold cup of coffee now. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye then. Thank you. Bye. Bye.